we thank god for this wonderful morning that he has given to us and uh, indeed it's a blessing to be in the sanctuary praising him worshiping him acknowledging the presence of the living lord each and every time when uh, i come here on his altar this is what i say very frequently is that every day if you're able to see it with your own eyes it's a blessing that god has given to you acknowledge it by a thankful heart acknowledge it by raising a hallelujah to him acknowledge it by raising a praise to him that god has blessed you with another day and uh, as our custom always reminds us if you are physically able kindly arise so that we could go through the jcf creed together kindly follow me as i read the creed the lord our god the lord is one i will love and follow the lord our god with all my heart with all my soul with all my mind and with all my strength i am a new creation redeemed from sin through the blood of our lord jesus i believe in the holy spirit and life everlasting amen and amen we have a very wonderful topic this morning and uh, the topic is something that we all know very well about the very first miracle that jesus did been recorded in the gospel of john that's water into wine the topic for this morning is water into wine and i invite you to open your bibles to the gospel of john chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 the gospel of john chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 will be reading from the esv that's english standard version it was like this on the third day there was a wedding at cana in galilee and the mother of jesus was there jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples then the wine ran out the mother of jesus said to him they have no wine and jesus said to her woman what does this have to do with me my hour has not yet come his mother said to the servants do whatever he tells you now there were six stone water jars there for the jewish rites of purification each holding 20 or 30 gallons jesus said to the servants fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said to them now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast so they took it when the master of the feast tasted the water now became become wine and did not know where it came from though the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him everyone serves the good wine first and when people have drunk freely then the poor wine but you have kept the good wine until now this the first of his signs jesus did in cana in galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him we will be focusing on verse 7 which says jesus said to the servants fill the jars with water and they fill them up to the brim god bless the reading and the hearing of his word and this is the time where we close our eyes and look upon the lord that he should come teach preach that he should come and sow a seed of his word in our heart that this word should transform our lives let's look upon the lord together most gracious father beloved lord we thank you so much for all that you do and give we thank you o oh lord for your blessings we thank you for every day of your faithfulness that we experience father this morning as we've gathered together in your sanctuary and even online oh lord god preparing ourselves for your word father speak to us speak to us oh lord 
that your word should be sown deep down in our hearts that it should bear fruits o lord that it should transform our lives that we shouldn't be only the hearers of thy word but also be the doers of it we thank you once again for everything you do and give bless the name of jesus we pray amen and amen a very wonderful text a miracle that took place in a wedding a miracle that took place where water miraculously turned into wine to give you a small briefing on what is going on in this chapter 2 we see that jesus and his disciples are invited to a wedding and uh, when we talk about the wedding wedding is a good time a time of feasting a time of enjoyment a time wherein we celebrate a time where we enjoy a time where we, wherein we move in with all the festivities of that event so ideally the jewish wedding which we come across it last for 7 days so in idol conditions any jewish wedding it last for 7 wonderful days and here it says that on the third day there was a wedding in cana and galilee so ideally it was on a tuesday where jesus had gone for a wedding so generally in the jewish culture the betrothal that is uh, the exchanging of the vows the exchanging of uh, the promises and after the betrothal it is the bridegroom who prepares for the wedding day he prepares the house he prepares all the essentials required so in ideal circumstances it takes almost like one year and uh, when the bridegroom is ready he comes with all his mates he comes with his friends the trumpets are blown and with a loud sound with a loud loud noise the bridegroom comes to take the bride and this is very similar to what we would experience during jesus's coming which the same thing that we would experience when jesus would come the bridegroom will come to take the bride that's the church and each and every one would be feasting rejoicing because that's a time where we would be experiencing the mighty the mighty living lord so here we see that this is a festival time and right in the middle of the wedding something happens which is very very disturbing you know wedding is a time where we enjoy where we do not want any kind of problems any disturbances and uh, god forbid if something happens we really get very disturbed and so did it happen in this wedding and we all know that when we read the scriptures that there was a shortage of wine there was a shortage of wine you know wine is very essential element in the bible it holds lot of importance in the bible the wine symbolizes blessing the wine symbolizes blessings the wine symbolizes sustenance of life the wine symbolizes sustenance of life you know that is the reason when each and every time a jewish person he takes a cup of wine he raises it up he gives a thank to the lord he proclaims a blessing and he says that blessed are you lord our god king of the universe for who has created the fruit of the wine so each and every time they take the wine before they take the wine they proclaim this blessing they thank god for the blessing of wine that they've received from him 
so now my friends my family just imagine if you are there in that wedding and if you are the host and you come to know that there is a shortage of wine what would your mindset be what would your mindset be because you would be confused wondering you must be disturbed you would not know because each and everything especially in events in weddings things are very calculative because you know for sure that these are the number of guests that you have invited and you have a number at the back of your mind you know that x number of guests are expected some kind sometimes it can be above sometimes it can be below but you know for sure a number so you calculate everything according to the number of people who are coming and you always keep some space for the excess ones who could fit in into the festivity so now these people the host would also have calculated the number of people who are coming and uh, despite of all that the word of god says that they ran short of wine they ran short of wine and during this time of confusion the mother of jesus comes to know and then she goes straight away to him she goes straight away to him my friends my family this morning the holy spirit is giving us an understanding that in your times of trouble that in your times of distress that in your times where you are certainly shaken up what's your point of contact what's your very first approach think about it i want you to to think and analyze the wedding is going on everybody is there they are enjoying they are having a good time a quality time and in that time the wine itself which people are drinking and marrying and enjoying that wine becomes short and the host who's there he and his family when they come to know they are all troubled they are running here and there they are just moving around just to understand what could be done how the wine could be arranged and in that middle when jesus's mother mother mary comes to know about this she goes with the right approach to the right person to the right person and says that they are short of wine a very beautiful understanding with this simple sentence a very beautiful understanding my friends my family today if there is anything short in your life what do you do if there is anything that short in your life what do you do when particularly year when wine represents blessings so if there is there are blessings short in your life what do you do there is no point running in the world there is no point running to here and there and looking out for those blessings there is no point running and getting wearied and burdened you should know where to approach you should know what's your very first point of contact you should know that whenever you are having a shortage whenever there is a lack whenever there is blessings missing in your life you should know to approach your father in heaven you should know to come to the feet of the lord jesus you should know to come to the right place to the house of the lord into his sanctuary that he should bless you that he should remove every lack from you that he should uplift you that he should uphold you that he should provide you that he should sustain you that he should make you raise up from each and every shortage each and every lack that you experience in your life because with each and every lack he also removes the disgrace that is attached to with it it's very true my friends my family you know think about it if the guest in the wedding they come to know that the host is 
not competent enough if the host is unable to provide them with the basic essential thing that is the wine what kind of disgrace would come to the host and his family that they couldn't provide the basic thing that they couldn't provide us with because you know anyone anyone even you if you are there and if you go to a wedding and if there is something that gets shot if there is even the most most tiniest thing even sometimes if things become get delayed before it comes to you you will start complaining that what kind of host they are that what kind of arrangements have they made it's not the right wedding because they were unable to give or unable to provide with the right arrangements that could comfort the guest so when such a thing happens it brings big disgrace to the host of the wedding it brings big bring big disgrace to people who have organized the wedding my friends my family this morning the holy spirit is encouraging you and i when we go to psalm 91 verse 15 Psalm 91 verse 15 it says when he calls to me i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will rescue him and honor him hallelujah i will rescue him and honor him how wonderfully the psalmist says that each and every time when you are lacking in your life each and every time when you are low in your life each and every time when you are requiring god's mighty hand of blessings to be manifested in your life all you have to do is call him call him call the name of the living lord call the name of the living lord and he says that in your times of trouble in your times of trouble when you are troubled with certain things of your life if you are troubled with certain issues of your life with certain matters of your life he says in your times of trouble when you call me i will rescue you i will rescue you your rescue is a very big word you know ask the person who's hanging on that cliff where he is he has no other way but someone should extend a hand or someone should extend a rope so that that person could be brought up ask that person who's right in the middle of a life and death situation and he needs somebody to rescue so god says that when you call him in your times of trouble he will rescue you he will take you out of your situation and he says that he will honor you my friends my family honoring is giving that grace to you uplifting you so that you should not be disgraced in your people you should not be disgraced among your community you should not be disgraced because of the trouble that you are in praise be to god hallelujah my friends my family this is a very big promise that you and i should understand that not only does he rescue us from our troubles he also uplifts us he raises up he honors us that we get blessed because he the living lord has answered to our call but what do we do the sad part you know the sad part because we've been very practical my friends my family the sad part in our practical life is that whenever troubles come to take us down we try to fight out the trouble on our own we try to make sure that we maximize our ability to take care of our problems and situations but the word of god says that whenever there is a shortage whenever there is a lack whenever there is trouble all you have to do is call upon the name of the lord hallelujah call upon the name of the lord you know then a very wonderful thing happens when we go back to this wedding we see that the mother of jesus has come she has shared the concern with him and jesus accepts the concern 
and then the mother says to the servants that do whatever he wants you to do and Jesus wonderfully gives a direction he gives an instruction he says go bring six jars he says go bring six jars so these jars my friends my family are the jars which are usually outside the house you know these jars are kept for ceremonial cleaning you know as per the Jewish culture each and every time you visit a house or you enter a house there is water that is kept in big jars or for that matter if it is a, a small house a small jar and before you enter the house you have to clean yourself wash your hands wash your feet so that you enter in cleanliness you enter without that dirt which you brought with you so that you enter being clean and here Jesus says bring me six jars so when we read the word of God it says that verse 6 that these six stones of water jars were for the Jewish rites of purification each holding 20 or 30 gallons and Jesus brought them to him he informed the servants he informed the attendants that bring those jars so that I could use them and when the jars are being brought he further instructs to them that fill them with water fill them with water and fill them to the brim that's to the very top fill them with water and fill them with brim my friends my family this morning the Holy Spirit is so wonderfully explaining each and every verse to us how it is related with us how it is connected with us and what spiritual understanding are we receiving from the anointed one when we read Isaiah verses 1 the very first verse in Isaiah chapter 5 it says that is anyone thirsty come and drink even if you have no money come take your choice of wine or milk it's all free Jesus is inviting we his children because if you and I understand our lives, if we look into our lives, we are like those unclean, unclean vessels that are kept outside. Because if you look at those vessels, those spots, from the outer side, from the outer side, they were so unclean that you would not even want them to, to take to the wedding or to the inner place but here Jesus is is taking those very pots which were used for purification rites he did not take the vessels that were inside he did not say to the attendants that go to the kitchen bring in those vessels which are very clean which are which are been kept clean so that I could use clean vessels but he says no go bring me those purification pots those pots that are kept outside outside so that you could bring them to me and then he says fill them with water fill them with water my friends my family this morning the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and I that when we bring our unclean lives to him when we bring our unclean self to him he says that fill with water water represents life water is the very living water when Jesus himself will fill us and not fill us to the to half or three quarter or one quarter but fill us to the brim hallelujah fill us to the brim you know all these things are very spiritual when we try and understand that why did Jesus say to those spots which were outside of that wedding place outside kept and only used for cleaning oneself they had no other purpose 
no other purpose they were only used so that whenever a guest comes in they would draw some water from it clean their hands clean their feet and just enter just like that so they were standing every day outside the house but he has brought it inside the house hallelujah he brought it inside the house that he could use those unclean vessels that he could use those spots which were kept outside so that he could fill those lives with the living water that they could produce wine hallelujah so that they could produce wine my friends my family that is why jesus is saying that if you are thirsty come to me if you are thirsty come to me if you do not thirst the lord if you do not thirst the lord there's no point going to him point blank if you do not have the thirst of the lord there is no point going to him because you're wasting your time because end of the day you go there you be with him you experience him experience him and yet if you do not understand your purpose of being led onto the way that he wants you to go then there's no point there's no point so you should be thirsty from the inside my friends my family you should be thirsty both physically and spiritually so that he could provide you and fill you up with the living water not to the very bottom or to the one quarter two quarter three quarter but up to the brim so that you are been overflowing with his blessings with his blessed living water now the beautiful understanding is that why did jesus want six jars to come in why did jesus want six jars to come in you know he could have said out of the six just bring in two lord he can do mighty wonders miracles with him everything is possible he could have been ordered even one could have said that one jar you just bring in i will fill it up with water and each time you draw from it the jar will still have enough wine to take care of everyone all the guests who are there in the wedding but no he said bring in six jars bring in six jars you know well even last friday when we were here understanding the word of god on the seven times if there is something which mentioned in the bible there is there for a reason because it is to be understood that why it is mentioned in the bible so when we talk about the number 6 and what it signifies the number 6 signifies incompleteness when we go back to the book of genesis we see and understand that man was created on the very 6th day aside the animals and all that were been created but here we are focusing on man so man was created on the 6th day and man is incomplete incomplete and why is man incomplete because unless you experience the holy spirit inside of you unless you experience the living water in your life unless you experience your father in heaven in you you are incomplete you must be having flesh and blood you must be breathing moving around but if you do not have jesus in you then your life is incomplete my friends my family if you do not have his mighty presence in you then you are incomplete a wonderful acknowledgement that god is giving to us from the book of isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 2 isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 2 it says the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to proclaim the spirit of the lord here we're talking about lord jesus the spirit of the lord that says father is upon him and he says that he has anointed me to proclaim proclaim the good news to the poor proclaim the good news to the poor when we talk about the poor it means in both physical sense and spiritual sense we many a times are poor in the spirit 
because we do not understand that what God wants us to do. We fail to move forward because we become poor in our spirit. So here Jesus is saying that I have come to you, my son, my daughter, that I have come to you because I, the anointed one whom my father in heaven has sent right just for you to proclaim the good news to you, the good news of the living Lord, the good news of the kingdom of God, the good news that God Almighty has set for you that he in due time, that he will Will bless you with the eternal life that with him through him in him you receive salvation no one else no one else in this world can give salvation to you no one else in this world can give you eternal life because you've been redeemed redeemed with the very last drop of his precious blood that you've been redeemed because he the living Lord has taken you out from all your afflictions, your iniquities, your condemnation, your sin. And he says to you that I am bringing good news. Good news to you, the poor. Poor in spirit. Poor in understanding. Poor in communication. Poor in each and every way and walk of your life. Poor in your physical sense. Poor in your spiritual sense. And thereafter he says that I have come to bind up the broken hearted. Bind up the broken hearted. You know when a heart breaks, that's the most sorrowful time of our life. And especially it happens in relationships. When you lose someone in your family, that is wherein you experience a heartbreak. When you lose someone near and dear to you, that's the time when you have a severe heartbreak. And relationships always experience such heartbreaks. And my friends, my family, the good Lord Jesus is speaking to you this morning that He has come to bind up, bind up your broken heart. Bind up your broken heart from every trouble, from every situation, from every problem, be it your relationships or be it any other situation for that matter. If your heart is broken, he says that I have come to bind you up. I have come to apply that touch of healing, to take care of your wounds, to heal you to bind you from your brokenness. You know, in our walk of life, when we are broken hearted, we fail to receive that condolence or that happiness because of the brokenness that has taken us down. If you have lost someone in your family whom you were very connected with or if you have experienced a broken relationship, be it with your spouse, be it uh, with the one that you are about to get married to you, be it any relationship for that matter, can be your children, can be your parents. And when you get into a broken relationship and you experience brokenness, where your heart itself is broken down, you would know that even words of condolences, words of comforting will not work out. But Lord Jesus says that I have come to give you that comfort. I have come to give you that touch of healing. That I have come to bind your brokenness. I have come to bind your wounds. That I have come to take care of you. Hallelujah. And thereafter he says that I have come to give you freedom from captivity. Freedom from captivity. My friends, my family, when we look into our lives, you know, and analyze it, some way or the other in our lives we are connected with certain things which have made us to be captives. Captives to them. We become slaves to them. 
you know if you understand you would know that all your addictions it can be any addiction it can be addiction of alcohol it can be addiction of drugs it can be addiction of even watching television it can be addiction of your mobile phones they are all addictions my friends my family and you become cap captive to that because each and every time you sit you need that addiction to comfort you you need that addiction to take care of you you know people smoke they drink they do drugs they do so many things but even in this time you would be amazed to see many of the youth many of the children they are addicted to all the social media the mobile phones the the apps the television the internet and they cannot be sitting idle each and every time they are you know you would see you would see that even if few minutes if they are just sitting they would want to reach out to their phones they would want to reach out to some instrument which would connect them to these addictions again you would not know you become a slave you become a slave you become a captive to such a things aside all the works of the flesh all that what the flesh does the sexual hungers the anger the immorality the immoral things that are there the idolatry that is there all those works of the flesh when you understand aside all those things there are so many other things that we have been captive of and jesus says that i have come to free you from your captives i have come to free all the captives i have come to free you from all that has taken you down all that is withholding you all that is taking you away from me all that does not want you to receive the true blessing all that does not want you to experience the true lord all that that does not want you to have that intimate relationship with your father in heaven he said that i have come to free you i have come to open the prison doors that you should be free from your captivity hallelujah my friends my family these are words of wisdom that the holy spirit is speaking to us this morning we all have problems we all have prayer request we all have lot many things that we bring to his feet we have burdens we have trials we have afflictions but this morning the holy spirit is making you to understand when you channelize your life understanding the purpose understanding what god wants you to do then all these things step by step he will take care that is why he says that the first thing that is why he said that the good news i bring good news to you when you accept the good news when you get soaked in the good news when you understand the word of god when you acknowledge in the word of god he says that hey, rest all rest all i will take care rest all i will take care because your brokenness i am there to bind if you are captive to anything any addictions i will make sure that your addictions are are gone in my name thereafter he says that i will release you from darkness i will release you from darkness you know the sad part in today's life we do not know that are we living in darkness or are we living in the light of the lord the reason why because we are so involved in our life we are so involved in our life that we fail to understand that are we really living a blessed life are we living in the light of the lord or are we living in the darkness that the enemy has brought upon us because if you do not understand this you would be moving towards the dark sides you will be moving towards the dark ways you will be moving towards the dark ends in your life not understanding not knowing that the good lord wants you to be in the light experience the light experience the life experience the truth experience the way experience the lord 
God himself every blessed day. So Jesus is saying to you and I that I have come to release you from the darkness. Release you from the darkness. Because you know, when we live in this darkness, we become prisoners to the darkness. We do not understand how our life is moving because everything seems dark and we become happy with this darkness sometimes. The reason why we become happy is because we give up. We give up to this darkness. We give up to our situations. We give up and say that now this is my life and I have to continue living this way. But Jesus is encouraging you this morning that I am taking you out from your darkness to the light. And most importantly, he says that proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. Proclaiming a year of the Lord's favor. You know, the word favor is a very wonderful word. It means an act of kindness beyond the usual. It means that an act of kindness. It's like God is kind to you. That is why he is giving you a favor. You know, every year in your life, you can receive that favor. Every year you can proclaim in his name a year of favor. Doesn't matter if there are famines, doesn't matter if there is a drought, doesn't matter if there are viruses, doesn't matter if there are wars, doesn't matter if there is all the wrong that is happening in the world. But he says, I have come to give you that favor in your year but all you have to do is understand that that favor can come to you once you are connected with him once you are united with him once you are embedded in him because he says that when you abide in me and I in you that you are safe you are protected I am there with you I am watching you I'll be guiding you I'll be nurturing you I'll be taking you on to the way every blessed day you and I will both together walk in this fallen world hallelujah what more do we want my friends my family when God himself is speaking to us that you and I we both will be walking together in this fallen world but all you have to do is proclaim the year that this year is not a year of sorrows, that this year is not a year of troubles, that this year is not a year that I will go down, but this year is a year of the favor, favor of the Lord. And we have to receive that favor. You know, that act of kindness that God gives to us, we have to receive it. That is why Jesus says that, come to me and receive it. It's free. No charges. You don't have to pay anything. Just come to me. And the catch is you have to be thirsty. If you do not thirst him, there's no point going to him. Because you will not receive. You will not receive that favor that can last through the year. You will not receive that favor that can last throughout the year. And then he says that he has come to comfort all who moans. Comforting all those people who are crying, who are in grief, who are mourning because of all the life that it has brought to them. My friends, my family, today's word is very prophetic, you know. The reason why it's very prophetic is because when you break down these points from Isaiah 61, 1 to 2, the good news Bind up the brokenhearted, freedom from the captives, release from the darkness, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and comfort to all those who mourn. There are six, six points. There are six anointings. There are six proclamations. There are six things which Jesus, the anointed one, is doing in your life because six is the number of we, the children of God, that's incomplete and he says to us and he is repeating himself this morning that I have come to you, that you be completed, that I have come to you with this six
six proclamations with these six anointings because I the anointed one have come to you this come to you with these six things that you should know and acknowledge that you should receive it in my name receiving the good news breaking free from captivity mending the broken hearted releasing from darkness proclaiming the year of the favor of the lord and comforting those who are grief in grief in mourning who are crying you know every day in our walk of life there are so many things that we cry for we cry for our needs we cry for our wants we cry over issues concerning to our jobs our our salaries our financial status our debts our dues that have to be paid our health condition so many so many things that we cry upon every day and he says that i have comfort i have come to comfort the ones that who are mourning that who are crying that who are grieving my friends my family the word of god is so wonderful that it speaks to us in a very profound way he gives us an understanding that how to move how to move in this walk of life how to move in the way of the lord and now this brings us to the takeaway for the morning and the takeaway for the morning for you and i that we have to carry home and understand and meditate upon is transiting to a new creation that transiting to a new creation jesus when he took the cup and we read the gospel of matthew chapter 26 verses 27 to 28 he says that take a drink from it because this is my blood my blood of the covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins for the forgiveness of sins my friends my family when you become a new creation with him in him through him he says to you and i that he is forgiving our sins because what happens is that when we come to jesus when we understand that he the anointed one has come to give the good news to us that he has come to break all the chains free us from our prisons from our mourning from our grief from our brokenness we surrender ourselves to him we confess ourselves to him and he says that when you do so you become a new creation and when you become a new creation all your sins all your past all that has happened with you in your life in the past he says everything i will blot it out and i will no more remember your sins because you are a new creation in him with him through him You know the beautiful thing about this new creation my friends my family is when you read the gospel of mark chapter 2 verse 22 the gospel of mark chapter 2 verse 22 it says and no one puts new wine into old wine skins if he does the wine will burst the skins and the wine is destroyed so are the skins but the new wine is for the fresh wine skins the holy spirit is giving you an understanding this morning when you accept that he should fill your life with the living water when you accept that you are thirsty and he should fill your life with the living water you become a new creation just think about it no one can understand even the science cannot understand that how can water turn into wine because the chemical composition of water and wine is very different it cannot be mixed or matched together and jesus has done it so similarly it would happen in your life doesn't matter in what 
chemical configuration are you in doesn't matter in what stage of your life in you, you are in when you come to him and when he fills you to the brim when he fills you to the top he says that you become a new creation you become a wine and he says that when you become this wine that's a new creation you should not be put in your old skins that means that you should not go back to your old life this new wine should go into the new wine skin because if you go back to the old way of yours then there's no point because that is what he is explaining through this example of the wine skin that if you take new wine put it in the old wine skin it will burst because it has already expanded to the max with the old wine so it will not be able to hold the new wine so the new wine should go into the new wine skin similarly when you are a new creation all that is past is past you don't have to bring your past into your present you don't have to bring that thought flow of yours into the present because my friends this is a very practical approach what happens in our life is when we are moving with the lord when we receive his blessings when we receive his grace when we receive his favors and he forgives us from all that we have gone through we sometimes go back to the old life we go back to the old self we are not a new creation then we are not a new creation because when jesus says that the new wine has to go into the new wine skin he says that your thoughts should change your life should transform you should not bring the past back again into your life because i have forgiven each and everything i have renewed you i have restored you now you are not the old you are a new creation you know i can relate to this example wonderfully because the day i was on the the operation in the in the operation theater on that bed the day when god renewed my life the day when my past was gone and god brought in that new creation the day the old was dead and the new living came upon the day was the day when all that i had in the past where all that i used to practice in the past where all that i was attached with the past all the addictions all those things which i was into in the past they all become a past they all become a past and i was moving in the light of the lord because i become a new creation hallelujah my friends my family this is what god wants you to do to be a new creation this is what jesus wants to you to do that when you experience him when you are filled in your life with the living water up to the brim that you are overflowing with his blessings in your life he says that i will forgive everything that you have gone through no more past no more past but you become a new creation and a new creation has to have the thoughts of the lord jesus the new creation has to share the mindset of the lord jesus think like him talk like him walk like him move like him that is why he says that when you abide in me abiding is like when you are grafted into him completely he says that you will experience fruitfulness in your life you will become a new creation you will be blessed because all the past all that you have experienced so far in your life is no more there hallelujah is no more there let us all arise and look upon the lord let's all arise and look upon the lord this is the time where we speak to him this is the time where we bring our unclean lives this is a time where we bring in all our uncleanliness to him this is the time where we bring our brokenness to him our 
grieving to him our addictions to him this is the time where we bring in all our afflictions to him this is the time where we bring in all our sicknesses all our diseases all our troubles all our afflictions all the problems that we are experiencing this is the time where we bring everything to his throne of grace that he should fill us because we are thirsty of him because we are thirsty to receive the touch of the living lord because we are thirsty that he should mend our broken hearts we are thirsty that he should touch us with the hand of healing we are thirsty that our diseases should go in his name we are thirsty to come to the light from our darkness we are thirsty to accept and be soaked in the good news we are thirsty that the word of the good lord should be soaked deep into us we are thirsty to experience him my friends my family this word is speaking to each and every one of us this morning this word is strengthening us this morning that look upon the lord look upon the lord look upon the lord look upon the lord come to him come to him if you are thirsty come to him that he will take care of you come to him that he will remove all your past forgive your sins confess to him confess to him wa bayna habaru kanwa sahim hashu confess to him confess to him speak out take out your heart to him because he says the one who believes in me the one who believes in him out of his heart will come out the living waters out of his heart will come out the living water out of his heart will come out the holy anointing of the holy spirit and that holy spirit will be moving and moving and hovering hallelujah accept accept your lives to be filled in the name of jesus accept your lives to be filled with the living water my friends my family you have come today to the house of the lord you have come today to the his sanctuary do not go empty handed because he wants to give you a blessing he wants to give you a blessing he wants to break he wants to break the yoke from your necks he wants to take away your brokenness He wants to remove your darkness bringing you to the light. He wants to open the prison doors. He wants to release you from your captivity. He wants to break you free from all your troubles. He wants to release you from your financial problems. He wants to release you from your diseases and sicknesses. He wants to break you free from all the burdens of your life the sorrows the troubles he wants to give peace to you the peace that surpasses all understanding my friends my family you are here for a reason you've not come here just like that receive the favor of the lord receive the favor of the lord all those who are poor in spirit all those who are poor and grieving and crying he says that i have come to take away to take away your troubles to take away your grief to take away all your affliction to take away to take away all that you are experiencing sabaka ya haba wa barahan ya rao wasaka biruak shamma hasaka ya ruak lakhabanu shiya na ya rahat ruak 
Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. From the crown to the feet, O oh Lord. From the crown to the soul, O oh Master. That we should receive your anointing. Father, no more. No more sickness. No more brokenness.